Market design is about building and rebuilding markets. It's uh, economics as engineering. We sort of think about markets as things that can be changed and that should run sort of at maximal efficiency. And you know, sort of the, the classical economic ideal of a market, sort of a perfectly frictionless place where transactions can happen and sort of optimally in a way that is uh, you know, socially efficient and hopefully uh, you know, not too distributionally unfair, uh, is really, really hard to achieve in practice. Uh, and so market design, in some sense, is the science of sort of creating the machine, build the incentives of the marketplace to bring the market together in as frictionless a fashion as possible. My colleague, Kenneth Prendergast, uh, has an incredible example in which he helped design the system that Feeding America uses to allocate food donations across food banks. And this is extraordinary. Um, because both because of what it did on the intensive margin, how the allocation was going within the system, and in the extensive margin, this actually brought in tons more food. So originally what was going on was a completely non-market interaction. You know, sort of uh, Feeding America was a centralized entity that would, would be, it would receive food donations from grocery stores or other providers, and they had some estimate of relative need uh, of different food banks, and they would call food banks and say, uh, you know, hey, we have a donation of X, where X might be yogurt, or it might be potato chips, or it might be frozen chicken. Would you like to take it? And the food bank would get to say yes or no, and if yes, they had to go pick it up from wherever the place was, uh, and if no, they said no, but it was counted as if they had said yes. So the only fair way they could find to allocate sort of in a completely centralized system this way was to just, you know, count every offer as, a, as an equally weighted offer, so potato chips and yogurt and uh, frozen chicken would be weighted the same way, and count every, you know, uh, every no as if it were a yes. Sort of, you get a certain number of offers rather than a certain number of units as a function of your observable need. But this is really inefficient. So first of all, uh, it doesn't make it possible for food banks to express idiosyncratic preferences. You know, either day to day or just based on sort of local availability, right? You might be in an area that is yogurt rich uh, and chicken poor or vice versa. Um, and so Feeding America commissioned a bunch of scholars, including my colleague Canis, to sit down and think hard about whether there was a better way to do this allocation. And what they came up with was amazing. It's a, uh, it's a system of fake currency or script currency called shares. All the food banks get shares, and every day, the different donations are priced in shares in a spot market. And so you, you bid shares in an auction, um, and if you're the winning bidder, you, you're allocated the donation, and you go and pick it up. And this had several effects. So first of all, price discovery allowed Feeding America to, uh, to see which, uh, which foods were the most valuable. It turns out that uh, you know, cereal or frozen chicken are much more valuable than potato chips, which is one of the, the least valuable things you can have. Um, second of all, it allowed the, uh, the food banks to differentiate themselves. Oh, Im important fact, uh, the shares that are spent at a given day are then redistributed back to the food banks. So money stays in the system and you can build savings. So day after day, shares re retain value. Um, so now you can differentiate yourself. You could be a food bank who buys things every day or a food bank who saves things up. And if you're in an area that's sort of otherwise food rich, maybe you're going to save up and wait for, for really valuable items. Whereas if you're a small food bank that's under-resourced, you know, you'll buy a lot of the cheaper items and, and have much more food to give out. And uh, it was hugely successful. You know, both it, it improved the market internally and allowed them to bring in, you know, tens of millions of pounds of additional food uh, from the outside as well. Because you know, prior to this allocation, Feeding America would often have to turn down donations of things that they didn't think they could place. And now sort of the market was liquid. They could place almost anything. They could go after more donations. And moreover, they could say, look, this is the thing we really need. Cereal turns out to be super valuable. Please give us cereal. And so they could solicit more useful donations as well. Incredible instance where building a market, uh, sort of a complete market environment where previously there was just nothing, was incredibly valuable. It both fed a lot of people, right? Sort of helped a lot of people's lives, um, reduced inequality among the food banks themselves. You know, sort of allowed them to 
better expressed their preferences and, and allowed the smaller ones to get a larger share of the pie. Um, and you know, it's just it's truly inspirational. It's, it's amazing what the market can do.